Okay, hi everyone, Vicki Verley here, Rock and Roll Prophetess. We're going to take a look at this new moon chart. Um, I got my thingy not quite right here. And this is on 11 11, November 11th, uh, 12 47 p.m. Eastern Time. So, a little early afternoon, new moon. You know, there's a lot, lot going on in this chart, and there's a lot of these bigger aspects that are going on as well. Uh, you know, the Saturn square Neptune, you know, this is the big thing that's happening. Um, and I feel like it ties in so much to um, religious freedom. Uh, Saturn, you know, Sagittarius is religion and higher mind. Neptune is spirituality. So there's a lot of that there. <clears throat> you know, I live in Ohio, too. And uh, they just voted against uh, having marijuana law reform. So, you know, we don't even have medical marijuana here, which, you know, Neptune is, could be classified under that thing. And, you know, it's just like, we don't even have medical. People are still going to jail in Ohio for pot, if you can believe that. So, you know, and this is this higher, this Saturn, trying to tell you, uh, you know, how to run your life, kind of, you know. And Scorpio is all about mind your business, you know. Scorpions are private. Scorpions don't put their business on the street, you know. Um, you know, I don't smoke cigarettes, and I don't, um, really, I don't drink alcohol much. You know, I, you always hear me talk about the bar if you watch these videos. Well, that was my family's business, but I was never much of a drinker, and I definitely am not now. I rarely drink, but I never would tell you not to drink, you know. <laughs> I would never tell you not to drink. I would never tell you not to smoke. I would never tell you or try to tell you um, what religious beliefs that you should have, you know. All the energy that we as a society put into trying to control other people, just think if we just all band together and focused on the real problems of our world, how much that energy could be redirected to positive, how much we could accomplish and things that could get done and, you know, it's crazy, but, you know, unfortunately there's still people that want to make you believe in only their religion or only any of their structured belief systems. You know, and they're going to try to force it on you. And, you know, I just don't get it. And Scorpio is definitely telling you, the new moon in Scorpio is like, mind your business, you know. Scorpios are not, uh, don't like people nosing around in their business, and they're not going to be nosing around in anybody else's business, you know. So this is a, some powerful energy of this new moon, though, too, because we've got this uh, Mercury there. So it's like speaking out. Um, it's kind of a dichotomy too, like I was just saying, Scorpio's kind of secretive and mind your business, but then Mercury is communication, expression, you know, all these kind of things. And it's trining up with Chiron. You know, so again, this could be these deep, dark wound things, you know. This could be really having it out in your things that are not public, in your personal relationships, you know. Um, dealing with these old, old wounds. Excuse me, I need some water. <clears throat> Digging them up here. And then the Chiron's retrograding too, so it's like going back over this old stuff. Uh, nothing over here in Cancer to fill that in for the Grand Trine. Uh, it's also sextiling Jupiter here too. So this Jupiter-Chiron opposition is getting activated big time by this new moon. So, you know, this is again uh, this energy of uh, being very detailed or being very loose. Um, being uh, grounded and impractical and being free, you know, and open. So there's, this is all going on. But because Chiron's involved, you, you know, we got to factor in these wounding things, you know. These Pisces, old wounds, you know. Uh, Pisces, maybe wounds that are buried in your subconscious, you know, that have been suppressed. You know, this kind of stuff could be activated for sure. Um, you know, flying free or being a reality. And ideally, you have to have a good mixture of both, you know. You can't be flying out of your body all the time. You're here on Earth. This is a 3D reality. You've got to be here. You've got to take care of business, you know. Um, 
And Scorpios are about taking care of business too. Definitely, you know, uh, they they they'll get the job done. You know, they're very disciplined, and you know can be really um, serious at times. You know, they can definitely be serious at times, but. Um, I don't see Scorpios telling other people how to live their life either, you know. I, I really just don't see that. I was thinking this morning about this, because this this uh, marijuana thing is just fresh. It just happened a day or two ago, so I've been a little bit knocked off my path uh, by that a little. But um, it's been, you know, up fresh in my mind. But I was thinking about, not, not, not about the marijuana, but Scorpio energy and how it ties into religion. I knew I was going to talk a little bit about that this, today. There was that one dude, though, and he was one of the famous televangers, um, you know, this preacher dudes that were on TV. And I still, I went to look it up and I can't, he's got the white hair. But he was a Scorpio. But, you know, he, he was definitely different than the rest of them. I mean, I didn't subscribe to any of those guys, you know. Um, I could see that that was definitely like a money thing. And that all was, most of them were dethroned. But he, um, he was different. I mean, I'm sure he made money from preaching on TV, but he was, what the heck was his name? Billy Graham. Ah, oh, thank you, universe. You know, Billy Graham, and I'm not saying I was a Billy Graham follower or his religion was right. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying he, I believe he was a Scorpio, but you could just tell he had that different kind of vibe to him than the rest of those guys. You know, um, and there was some truth, um, universal truth. Forget about religion for a minute. You know, there was some universal truths in the things that he was saying, you know. And he wasn't putting on a big dog and pony show. You know, he was kind of more, um, he had conviction and belief. And, you know, I don't know. I, I want to not get too hard on the religion. I don't want to get too deep into this religion stuff. You know, one thing I just noticed here again, something freaky happened with my software. At first I thought it was all intercepted houses, but it wasn't. So these lines looking a little funky. That's I just, you know, drew it on there real quick, you know. I could have got all, you know, deep and made it perfect, but it's just, psh, psh, okay, now we have our houses. <laughs> that was the first time that ever happened. But speaking about these lines, that that was drawing me in. Um, oh, also Uranus is in there, too. So that's, again, about the freedom, you know. And Uranus is coming into this Pluto square. This is, again, about freedom, religious freedom, um, you know, recreational <laughs> uh, things. You know, and this is drugs, too. I would never, I mean, you know me, I don't like the drug thing. I, I don't take anything, except for, I had to take some antibiotics recently, but I try not to take those ever, you know. But I would never tell you, I would never try to make your, all your drugs illegal that you take, pill poppers, you know. I would never try to say don't pop, I mean, I guess I do say don't pop pills, <laughs> but I'm not going to go out and try to legally stop you from popping pills, you know. If you want to pop pills, knock yourself out, you know. Rock on with your bad self. But I, you know, I'm not going to tell you not to do that, because that's again with the Neptune and the drugs. But how did I get off on that? Oh, this Uranus, Uranus Pluto again. So this is Uranus Pluto. Uranus is activated by that uh, moon, 17 degrees, 19 degrees, right in there. So freedom, you know, freedom from all this stuff. Live and let live, you know, that's Uranus. And um, Uranus is dealing with the bigger issues, you know. A lot of times we're down here fighting about stuff that... Um, you know, we get so caught up in fighting about stuff, and half these wars are over religious stuff, that really, again, I'm just going to say, if we would redirect our energy that we're using to fight against others, whoever, for whatever reason, I'm not taking any sides or showing, trying not to show any bias, what could we do with that energy? What could we do? What could we accomplish? How could we move into the Aquarius age with Uranus? by leaps and bounds. You know, it's happening somewhat with the internet. You know, but there's still a lot of people, there's still a lot of older people that really don't even use the internet at all. You know, they're relying on TV commercials to and as far as legislation, the older people are the most voters. They're the highest number of vo voter people, and a lot of them are getting their information from television and commercials and that's how they're basing their decisions. So it's, you know, I don't want to get into that either. I've talked a little, I'm a little bit, uh, just I'm a little miffed and thrown off by everything that's happened here. And there's a lot of, you know, there's square, there's major squares going on in these charts and opposition. So there's a lot of this energy 
coming off this chart. But anyways, back down to here. Nodes are at zero. I mean, they're going to change. They're going to change this month. I, mean, I forget. I should have looked that up. I think it's like the 16th or the 19th or something like that. They're going to change. Now, we all know about 28, 29 being critical degrees. Mars is at uh, 29 Virgo. Uh, Vesta, 28 Pisces. So Mars opposed Vesta. There's something to delve into, too. That's totally the male and the female. Because the Vesta is the Vestal Virgins. Mars is the aggression warrior male energy but back to this uh zeros zero is critical degree too you know when i learned about critical degrees i was taught that zero is a critical degree too and i've been so focused on these esoteric readings and these esoteric charts you know so i i really count those in you know give special attention to those just as much as the 29 degree stuff but anyway so it's critical degrees uh, Libra is the feminine, Aries is the male, Mars is the ruler of Aries, is 29, it's the, you know, and then Vesta comes in. Um, and Venus, ruler of Libra, is also in the mix on this. So there's Venus uh, being, you know, the, the, the ultimate feminine energy, you know. Venus is the women and Mars is male, you know, women and men. So there's a lot of this, and it's not really, a, I don't think about your gender. I mean, I think it's about traditional uh, energies, air, male energy, Aries, Mars, war, conquer, you know, outward expression, go outward, you know, force, using force to try to force anything, you know. Uh, and then the Venus, the Vesta, the feminine, uh, the receptive, being receptive, um, you know, nurturing, loving, and you can't uh, do both, you know, I mean, it, I'm feeling that it's just this, like, last chance to find this balance between that, and I think that's what the new paradigm in the Aquarian age is going to be about. It's not going to be so male and female, you know, uh, war or lo love, you know, these drastic um, oppositions, these drastic uh, differences. It's there's going to be something in the middle. And, you know, the Native Americans uh, always, uh, in the traditional teachings, you know, the men weren't of any more power than the women. There was the Women's Wise Council. So that was always a shared thing. And that's how I like that they, great spirit. It's not uh, God the Father or the Goddess. It's great spirit. It's genderless. It's, you know, for the good of the all and all that. And, you know... Um, it's like, you know, we were, the ancient, we were in a matriarchal society way back. All those old, uh, what's that book? That's a great book by Vicki Noble. Uh, or maybe it's Shakti Woman, or is that the book by Vicki Noble? I was reading all that stuff uh, around the same time. I know she did the Mother Peace Tarot. But these, I, I believe she wrote a book, and it was so enlightening, you know, because I never learned this stuff in history class in school. All we learned about was what wars, who conquered who. That's why I, I hated history. Because all it was about was who fought who, and then they conquered the territory, and now this this ruler and that ruler. You know, it was just so not interesting. You know, and then there's this other, uh, there was an ancient goddess culture, and you've seen the statues. It's the round, feminine woman statue with the breasts. And they went through and they destroyed all of them. Just like things over in the Middle East right now. And from time immemorial they've done that. You know, they're destroying all the old stuff because they want to re-race it and make it the new thing. You know, when they burned the um, libraries and, uh, you know, during Cleopatra, uh, Alexandria, the library, you know, it's, they've done this over and over again. This is the Mars energy. Erase our previous knowledge, you know, and, and, and prove your point. And I'm not saying it's, I'm not trying to um, get on what's going on necessarily in the Middle East. I'm not trying to provoke or say anything's good or evil. It's, it's just been done over and over and over again. And then, so then they wiped out all the goddess culture, and then the patriarchy was born. And so now we're coming to the end of the change of the patriarchy, and it's not that it should go back to the feminine you know, the goddess culture necessarily. It would go back to the Unitarian, Uranus, the Aquarius, the age of Aquarius. Balance, harmony for all. You know, it's not about um, either or. 
one or the other, opposition, squares, you know, we're going to fight because we're having a square here. You know, the Pluto-Uranus is more of a fight than the Neptune-Sag um, thing, the Pisces-Sag thing, because these are mutable signs. Um, it's a little different. It's a softer energy. It's, I mean, I know Saturn's involved, um, but it's a softer energy. It's a softer transition. It can be, and probably, I feel, will be, you know. The, the changes that are going to be implemented over this long-spanning Saturn-Neptune is probably going to be softer, easier, more subtle, okay? Um, probably not so in the physical world, but more about our ideals and beliefs and spiritualism, our spiritual beliefs and our uh, spiritual growth and progress and our philosophy and our outlook. So it's not really, uh, this, this particular energy I would feel is not that much about conquering lands and territories and it's, it, it's more, it could be more from within, you know, it's a more uh, inner knowledge, inner uh, wisdom, you know, inner truth, that kind of stuff. All right, well, so there's still probably more. This chart is uh, a lot of stuff going on here. Jupiter, yeah, Jupiter's involved in that new... I did say it was sextiling. I did talk about that. Um, Venus conjunct the node. Yeah, let's get a little bit more into this. I think it's kind of cool that Venus is uh, conjuncting the node as it's leaving its um, its position of... The, the, the north node leaving its position of Libra to go into Virgo. Because it's almost like it's seeing it off. Venus rules over Libra. It's like um, it's ushering it out. And that could be a really sweet and uh, beautiful thing. That's what I kind of get about it. Like I'm getting like angel kisses or something crazy like that. <laughs> um, and Lilith passed through there. And it, it, uh, it's almost like Venus is separating Lilith from, like it's a fairy godmother. So honestly, it's what I'm kind of picking up. <laughs> It's like, okay, Lilith, you made your point. Back off here, girl. <laughs> okay, you've done a beautiful job. She's kissing the node. You've done a beautiful job here in Libra. It's like Glinda the Good Witch or a Fairy Godmother or somebody. I'm sending you off. <laughs> little kisses and then little sparkles from my magic wand and off you go. You know, because Lilith coming through there and, and you know, it's going to face Mars on the other side of there. You know, it, it, it's this, um, it's this magical, it could be this magical moment or this magical glimpse. And, and a reminder not to be so harsh. Because both Mars and Lilith can be harsh, you know. And I just feel like this Venus is, doesn't look like she's just flying above there like a little fairy angel. <laughs> Anyways, I know some of you don't like when I get off on my little things, but it's that's what I'm kind of getting psychically. It's like a little butterfly fairy flying down. Okay, I'm going to, putting the light around like Linda the Good Witch would do, I'm going to see you off now. And, you know, like uh, just a, a cleansing or a beautification or something. I, I really like that there. Um, so, yeah, it's like separating, because it's almost like, you, she's breaking up a fight here <laughs> between Lilith and Mars, you know, the the feminine Lilith and Mars, the male, you know, and she's like, okay, we're going to stay in balance. And, you know, it's just this uh, little light, angelic, fairyish energy, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's, what else is going on here? Let me go back to the aspectarian. I got a new camera, so I don't have to worry about running out of time. I can go longer than a half hour if I want. I don't know that we will, but if I want to, I can. <laughs> and that's a nice uh, thing to have. Well, the Arana square Pluto, Saturn square Neptune. We've already talked about that. Mars conjunct Venus. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Mars conjunct Venus. You know, this is down to the mundane, everyday stuff again. And there's a lot of personal things that could be going on here. Lovers stuff. And, you know, some of this with Chiron re retrograde down here, this could be past lover stuff. Sometimes we could even be, you know... So people could be divorced for many years and already in, have another marriage or another relationship, but there's still these deep um, old wounds that haven't been dealt with. 
you know, and um, so this could be an uncovering of that, especially because the new moon's in Scorpio. They're going to uncover the deep uh, secrets it can be. Um, Scorpios aren't going to, they don't put everything out there, though. They don't put their business on the street. That was the biggest thing that I got from this, you know. They don't put their business on the street. They usually don't want to be a gossip or, you know, because this Mercury here, this sort of seems like it could be like gossip. Like, some of you may hear, you know, some gossip about dirty... Some, some, some of this stuff could be revealed. Some of this stuff could be revealed for old stuff, too, I just got. Like, um, with all this political stuff that's going on in America, watch some skeletons fly out of the closet during this. You know, some old person who's been, you know, n had this little bit of knowledge, maybe they're going to speak out and, you know, some dirt... And with Scorpio, maybe it is sexual. Maybe it was some kind of, you know, affair or something like that. I mean, that could totally be... that could Something like that could happen, too. Some kind of sexual nature to it. Um, also, the deep, dark sexual secrets that anybody has. Anywhere from uh, rape kind of a vibe, it can be. I mean, it could be that dark. Or, you know, um, for other people who um, are questioning their sexuality or their gender... You know, maybe this is, and that's not easy to do. I mean, it's just, it's not. I mean, it's becoming easier all the time. But then that's another way that these haters and these people want to restrict these choices for other people. Mind your business. That's Scorpio. Mind your business. Instead of focusing your attention on hating somebody or trying to restrict them, again, what could we do? just it's just mind-boggling and it's just um thrilling and it's just you know exhilarating to think if we all just stopped dropped the hate dropped the war and turned our attention we could solve the world's problems like bam you know in in a flash with your honest in a, like a lightning bolt bam we could just turn this thing around and you know, live and let live and let people be peaceful um, that aren't hurting anybody. You know, they should be peaceful. You know, Ceres is in Aquarius, too. So this is new ideas, new inventions surrounding Ceres, the grain, the food, farming, um, things like that, new approaches to that, um, advancements. But in Aquarius, it wouldn't be what they're doing now with Roundup stuff. I don't want to open that can of worms again, but it would be from a higher mind. It would be for the good of all. It wouldn't be for these greedy guys with the bug spray and the plants and stuff. You know, it wouldn't be that. Uh, it would be different. Aquarius. Aquarius is, you know, it's, it rules beyond the Earth plane. Aquarius energy, Uranus, is beyond the Earth plane. It's beyond the 3D reality. It's electricity. It's science. It's all that kind of, uh, you know, it's, I feel that it is connection with ET, honestly. That's how that stuff will show up in charts when I'm doing these soul readings and stuff. You know, but it doesn't have to, you know, um, manifest itself in that manner, but it's, it's definitely being able to tune into way higher vibrations. Even the sign of Aquarius, how it looks, it looks like electricity, you know. It's, 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 it's. So, um, it's got sparks coming off of it, you know, and it's buzzing, and it's ele it's crackling, it's buzzing, it's electric. It's electric, boogie oogie oogie. <laughs> All right, enough of the joking around, I'm kind of in a silly mood. So, yeah, new beginning to get deep into those feelings. Uh, bigger, though, is the male and the female energy. And don't take, not taking sides finding some happy middle ground, finding balance. Uh, when solving any kind of problem in your personal life or in any kind of whatever, Uranus, you know, what for the good of all? You know, you know these odd aspects you always have to make an adjustment. So make an adjustment and think, well, what would be the best for the good of all? Compromise. This last blast of Libra with this Venus blessing coming through... It's, there has to be compromise uh, made. You're not always going to get exactly what you want. Um, seeing the other, because the, the Aries, um, 
the Aries Libra is the first and seventh house in the flat wheel. First house is me, myself, and I. I was down here, not the twelfth. It's funny, I was pointing at the twelfth. Maybe I'm supposed to look at this more. Uh, you know, me, myself, and I. And seventh is the others. So seeing the other's point of view. Um, not trying to force the other to conform to what you want. And your way of thinking. And your way of being. You know, seeing things from another's point of view. And if they're, you know, if the, you know, if they're not hurting you, why do you care? Why do you care if somebody's gay? Why do you care what church they go to, what religion they do go to? Why do you care if they smoke some weed? You know, wh why? I I don't get it. You know, I just don't get it. But um, I'm trying to stay keep my personal stuff out of this. Uh, uh, anyways, what about this palace at three? Is this uh, this is sextiling Neptune too? Okay. And what else? Uh, that's also squaring the Venus over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, they don't put the um, asteroids down that thing, the grid, the aspectarium. Palace and Capricorn square this. You know, that could be a little bit rough energy too, you know. Because um, Palace is forward thinking and going about things in the new way and everything. But also, oh, Pallas Athena was a warrior, you know. And that's squaring off with this. I just feel this protective bubble around this, you know. I just feel like Venus is outshining them all here. V she's got the bubble, like Glinda the Good Witch over here, you know, like a protective shield as she gently uh, allows this to happen, uh, gives birth you know, the death and rebirth of the new energy, which is also Scorpio. Oh, that one was a good one. Chills down my back there. Whoo! So it's the death of the Libra energy and the birth of the Virgo. Um, and Venus is there to facilitate. Like, she's like the doula or the midwife or somebody over here. Because that is another thing, you know, right off the bat, I should have mentioned that, you know, Scorpio, death and rebirth. That's ex Pluto. That's what it is. That's the first thing you think of when you think of... Also, uh, November 11th, 11-11, this is happening on. So there could be some pretty big shifts, you know. And it doesn't have to be real harsh, you know, as, it, as it has been with all the... And with these oppositions. This Venus blessing is really strong, I feel, you know. And I feel like she's like, I'm just not going to allow any of that to touch me. I'm here to usher you out and on to the next uh, phase, on to the next thing. Yeah, you could be in, heading for some rough waters. Mars is sitting right there, 29, <laughs> in a critical degree, waiting to take you on. So she's like shielding her and allowing this to, giving it uh, some strength. Remember the lessons of Libra. Remember the lessons of Venus that you learned in your travel through my sign, Venus's sign. I'm sending you off now like uh, a child. You know, I've raised you the best I can and now I'm sending you off uh, into the world. Um, and you'll be the foundation that you've acquired under my tutelage. This is Venus talking to the no, by the way. <laughs> the foundation that you've acquired under my tutelage will set you up and carry you through and give you strength to face whatever lies ahead. Okay, I think that's a good place to stop. That was a pretty c cool thing there. Uh, and real quick, I just want to throw up my thing. I've got You should see a thing up in the info, and that'll take you to this page if you want to, um, you know, check out my stuff. It's all on this page. That's one of the things I'm going to be doing when I, uh, during this little break, I want to try to get a, my website together, and my, a good website for myself. But for the time being, it's on the Mandela site. Everything's there. You just got to keep scrolling. And you scroll down, there's the readings. That's that Soul's Journey reading. It's real popular, and people are liking it. And I'm liking it, too, because I'm learning. I'm learning so much, you know, from these readings. Uh, it's, it's allowing me to progress spiritually, which I want to thank all of you for that. By doing these charts for you, I'm gaining so much knowledge and insight. And it's, it's helping my spiritual growth, which is, you know, something I'm interested in, too. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be stagnant myself. You know, I want to progress, keep progressing and moving on. And if you are looking for predictive, this ever-popular year ahead is there. And then, of course, uh, the donate button underneath. Um, it's all in that info section. And if you look under the in the bottom right corner, 
There should also be the uh, takes you to my channel so you can subscribe if, if you like. Um, yeah, the past life readings are really cool. Um, it's a video reading that you can watch forever. So if you're interested in astrology and esoteric spiritual astrology and your soul journey, then uh, definitely check that out. You can watch it now. You can watch it forever. It's relevant forever. You can come back to it years from now and maybe get a new... Uh, new slant on it okay I think that covers everything so here it is new moon in Scorpio uh, transition death and rebirth as we move from the Aries Libra energy into the Pisces Virgo energy it's a turbulent transition there's a lot of squares going on it's like giving birth totally and with Vesta here too you know it's giving birth and it might be a, a little bit of a, a hard labor but then um, it's always progressing and it's always uh, moving forward. Just like in life and everything, right? Okay. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for liking and subscribing and sharing and donating and everything you guys do to make uh, these free videos happen. Remember that you are Love and Beauty Incarnate. Have a great uh, new moon and I'll speak to you soon.